All right, so I have finished the painting and it looks perfectly respectable. It looks very much like what I was aiming for, the, um, the kind of pastel paintings of the past with not even quite as much spontaneity and looseness as the Toulouse-Lautrec, though there are hints of that, you know, kind of behind the eyes and in the hair and in the background. So now what I like to do with digital painting is I've saved this. I've got the, the safe version that definitely looks right from a distance. But now I want to try stripping things away, right? I'm going to keep the signature. I'm going to keep this little kind of triangle of proportions. But let's try taking everything else away. And what does that leave me with? <laughs> leave me with a background a mouth, eyes, a hairline, some little dashes of highlights, um, and nothing else. And that's a contemporary portrait, right? That's unusual. But does it look like Oscar Wilde? No, not quite. So what can I start building in? Well, I can build in, let's say, these elements. Start stripping away, but then build back in the sketch. Yeah, the sketch helps. And then the skeps kind of shows me, oh, you know what, from the these strong elements here, I'm going to use my eraser, which is customized to my pastel brush. I'm going to start biting away a little bit at the edges of these, these elements. Especially big areas, I feel maybe I don't need so much, right? And then, what else could I use? Well, the the pastel kind of composite overlay of texture, yes. Um, the refined painting, well, that's that's nice. You know, that makes it look a lot more like a a portrait in process, right? Having that refined painting in there. And then that allows me to take away even more of the, the upper portion. But what if instead of the refined painting, it's just the finished painting, these kind of slashing marks. Now that, that looks even more kind of intentional, right? And focused. I like the pinks in the hair, so maybe that, to bring those pinks out, I can even get rid of more of this. It's like um, sanding your, your painting down to its aspects. It's a lot of fun to have kind of the bravery to do this. But it takes really no bravery at all when it's digital because you can always go back to your original product. All right, well, what's next? Do I feel like I need the nose? Well, if I just feel like I need some aspects, what I can do is I can just lasso, kind of brutally take certain parts of the refined painting layer and duplicate them so that they're there. And then erase away from their edge. They look a little bit more considered. But also, it's almost like a pellet knife technique where it's kind of scraped in. See, now all the painting's been done. Now I'm taking away. And I'm deciding, what do I leave? What is to be left? And then also from the refined painting layer, maybe I need a little bit of this ear. So I duplicate that. Right. and see if I miss not having it, and then kind of erase out the edges. Cement them in nicely. And then what else do I think I need? Maybe this little bit of cheek here.
I'm going to erase out. So it's kind of like um, what they'll do in in some government offices. You know, when a new boss comes in, everyone gets fired, and then they have to reapply for their old jobs. So that's what it's like. I'm interrogating every layer and seeing, okay, what's really needed? And I'm doing tremendous budget slashing. Now, do I need any of this? Now this all just seems so fussy and unnecessary, right? I've got the, the big portions in. In fact, there's probably even more I can get rid of. So I've got an interesting texture already there. And this is what makes digital art a contemporary process, or one that can really help. You'll see contemporary painters in Manhattan and San Francisco and New York, uh, Boston, LA, you know, doing kind of rough figurative painting that feels very fresh and new because they're taking big parts out they're being selective about what they use. And this becomes part of our vocabulary because of the strength of digital and how strong these decisions can be. All right, so now I ask myself, well, what do I like better? This kind of image or what I had before? It just took me about six minutes to strip it away. And it's a personal taste thing. But I gotta say, I'm liking the energy of this more. And I have those options. So then I'll save that. And I might save it as a version. But I, I wanted to share that with you. And going more and more contemporary, becoming more abstracted as you go, um, it can get to where it's almost completely non-representational, where it's just an excuse for, for textures. And that might be kind of the, the last straw. So if you take the sketch away and you take the, the main focal points away. You know it's a person. It's definitely not Oscar Wilde, you know, or anyone in particular. You take some of these framing devices away and it becomes like a Kandinsky or more like a uh, Clay Oldenburg painting. You know, it's just about textures and marks. It's just fascinating the kind of things you can do. We could even play with taking these elements that we copied and we can stretch them, move them other places, rearrange it, make a new composition, heck, make a landscape painting out of it. And that's the, the fun and the power of, of digital art. If I wanted to turn these into more landscape elements, I can have kind of the rocks down here. And this can be the tumultuous sky. That I stretch across. Maybe play with the color. I'm 
brighten up to be more cloud-like. Play with the hue. Bring in the more the blues of the sky. Let's see. Take certain elements of that, stretch them bigger. Play with them individually. Take other things, move them around. Just pushing and pulling. And you'll hear a lot about in a contemporary painting class. And of course, you know, you can always feel free to erase away. There it is. And instead of having the signature there now, instead of having my sketch there, maybe we just title the piece Oscar Wilde. Because <laughs> that's where the starting inspiration happened. Right. So now it's our own digital artwork. So, so many different options. So let me save this as a non-representational version. So I'll have kind of the representational one I started with, the abstracted one where I just stripped away, kind of cut into it, and then this non-representational. Just an excuse for colors and shapes across the, the canvas. Still want to play with it. There, I like that. Okay. So digital art is not just a technical tool. It can also be a very, very creative and expressive tool, this computer. And we can end up with something very original and not as derivative as what we even set out to do. And that's the, the beauty of this art form. All right, so if I, let's see, it's still saving. If I look at these different versions and save the JPEGs, then I have this whole little portfolio now of Oscar Wilde portraits. And I fully explore what the pastel kind of brush that I developed can do, um, and these different kind of layering of different papers and techniques.